The movie begins in Paris with an unnamed assassin looking out of a window. He set a timer and almost falls asleep before waking up parched. Despite not having a name, he's known as the killer. He wears gloves while sitting by the window, observing people's daily lives. To stay sharp, he does yoga and push-ups and maintains good posture. Afterward, he leaves the room with shades and a hat, takes a few flights of stairs, and leaves the building. He scans a bike with his phone, grabs supplies from a nearby cafe, and gets on a call with a man who promises someone will arrive. The killer mentions waiting for five days and gives a two-day ultimatum. He returns to the building, expressing refusal to book more Airbnb places due to hidden nanny cams, as narrated in the movie. As the day progresses, the killer keeps observing people until nightfall, when he sets up his sniper rifle by the window. Suddenly, someone opens the room's door behind him, startling him. It turned out to be a mail delivery, and the person quickly left. The killer was on high alert, considering it a close call. As dawn breaks, he remains at the window, reflecting on how boredom is one of the toughest challenges in his line of work. To combat this monotony, he occasionally stages accidents or uses gradual poisons, which sparks his creativity. He goes on to disinfect the sink and eventually settles into his makeshift bed to end his day. After taking a power nap and setting an alarm to periodically check for his target's arrival, the killer notices curtains being drawn at the target's location. Shortly after, a car arrives, and a housemaid readies the chambers for a VIP visitor. Reacting swiftly, the killer sets up his sniper rifle again and observes a man inside the house through the scope. After loading the bullets, the killer adjusts his bed to align with the window level, observing more people entering the building. The housemaid greets additional guests, and the killer puts on his earphones, closely monitoring a woman being escorted to a room. He dons his hoodie and confidently murmurs, I don't give a poo, before focusing on his target through the scope. As he watches, his watch alerts him to an increased heart rate, prompting him to contemplate morals, which oddly calms him down. The target, accompanied by his wife, finally appears in the killer's view. However, his shot misses the mark as the guard swiftly closes the blinds. Realizing the botched attempt, the killer hurriedly packs up his weapons. He hastily wears a motorcycle helmet and rushes towards his scooter, making a swift getaway. Discarding his gun into a passing garbage truck, he continues driving, but soon notices police swarming the streets. The killer tries to evade them, but finds himself surrounded by the growing police presence. After evading the police using evasive maneuvers akin to Jason Bourne, the killer reaches a point where he abandons his bike and climbs a set of stairs. He discards his helmet and heads to a seedy gas station, using its grimy public toilets for a quick disguise change. Transformed, he hails a nearby cab and heads towards an airport. However, while waiting in line, he notices a Belgian Malinois dog and decides to avoid any potential issues by changing direction. He takes a moment to freshen up, purchases a plane ticket, and then heads to a phone booth. The killer contacts someone on the other end of the line, briefing them about the situation. He boards the plane and notices a foreboding figure nearby. Upon arrival at his destination, an announcement offers a delayed option with a voucher and accommodation for a day, which he accepts. He safely reaches his hotel room, employing a glass cup as a makeshift alarm on the door handle, then settles on the couch. The following day, he quietly leaves the hotel, heads to catch his next flight, and tunes in with his earphones during the journey. Upon arriving, he drives through picturesque landscapes until he encounters a gate with boot marks. This raises his suspicion, prompting him to grab a pistol, jump the gate, and sprint toward a mansion. Inside, he discovers bloodstains throughout the house, prompting an immediate call for help followed by a rush to a nearby hospital experiencing power outages. At the hospital, he finds his wife, Magdala, in critical condition. Marcus, Magdala's brother, informs the killer that she described the attack, mentioning a man and a woman. She managed to injure the man and hide in a bathroom. Marcus suspects that the assailants were looking for the killer but found his wife instead. Sitting beside Magdala's bed, the killer hears her awakening, assuring him that she didn't reveal anything about him despite immense pressure from the attackers. With that reassurance, he leaves the hospital and delves into the investigation, opening an underground safe and subsequently packing his bags the next day. Driving through town, he spots a vehicle matching the description of the one that left his house. As night approaches, he requests an emergency driver, but upon entry he infiltrates their database until he locates the specific driver he's seeking. Sending a package to Dolores via mail, he then stakes out a location and spots the driver. Tailing him, he eventually asks for a ride tapping his pistol on the glass to compel cooperation. The driver hands over his wallet and provides information, labeling the two he escorted as freaks. He describes taking them to a hidden mansion and being coerced into waiting for their return. Unmoved by the driver's story, the killer eliminates him. 
With a fake passport, he leaves the country, heading to New Orleans. At a storage facility, he parks his van, acquiring guns, files, a new license plate for a different vehicle, power tools, and even a banana. In New Orleans, he spots a woman named Dolores, signaling it's time to execute his plans. Pretending to be a garbage man, he gains access to the building. Upon reaching his designated floor, he times the closing of the door, drinks from a bubbler, and manages to keep the glass door ajar. Confronting Dolores, she is visibly frightened. The killer then holds her and subsequently holds Hodges at gunpoint. Hodges recognizes the killer and his line of work, advising Dolores to comply. After securing her in the bathroom, Hodges confesses that he was compelled to orchestrate consequences due to the killer's missed shot against a powerful man. In a tense confrontation, Hodges, revealed to be one of the killer's bosses, offers disappearing as the only survival solution. The killer demands information about his backups, but Hodges claims there are none and insists the killer wouldn't harm him. However, the killer surprises Hodges by shooting him in the chest with a nail gun, determined to take control of the situation. Despite giving Hodges a six-minute window to save himself, Hodges succumbs to the injury and dies on the spot. The killer proceeds to Dolores, intending to gather information from her. She knows the names he seeks, but demands a promise that he won't leave things in a negative light. Despite his inner voice telling him empathy is a weakness, the killer frees her. But when Dolores sees Hodges, she faints. The killer disposes of Hodges in a garbage can. Later that night, the killer takes Dolores for a drive. When they stop and he exits the van, she tries to escape, but fails. Ultimately, she assists him in sifting through files to find the subcontractors responsible for breaking into his house. They find a name, Claiborne, the client behind the intrusion. After finishing, the killer kills Dolores in a psychopathic manner, frustrated at always having to clean up after himself. He heads to a motel for some sleep after cleaning his van and grabbing a meal. Soon after, he heads to Florida following an address. As night falls, he spots some men at the location and decides to tail them. One of them heads back to his house, guarded by a large barking dog. The killer tosses the dog some food to distract it and enters the property when the dog is absent, waiting patiently for an opportunity. The killer stealthily navigates around the house, finding the dog napping and entering through the front door. Inside, he hears someone showering in the bathroom. While preparing himself mentally, he's suddenly confronted by the man, who demonstrates his toughness by overpowering the killer. Though the killer fights back, their intense scuffle wrecks everything in the house. Despite inflicting multiple injuries on the man's face, the killer's chokehold is evaded, leading to a continued struggle resulting in more destruction. When the man reaches for a gun, a struggle ensues, causing the man to get wounded. The killer arms himself with whatever is available and hides behind the door, finally gaining the upper hand when he finds a pistol. He injures and ultimately kills the man. Fleeing for safety as the dog pursues, the killer throws a Molotov cocktail to burn down the house, erasing evidence. The next day, he heads to the airport, boards a flight, and travels to New York City. Opting for public transport, he rents a car and arrives at the supposed house of the subcontractor. Resting until nightfall, he observes a woman matching the description provided by a taxi driver earlier. As she starts driving, the killer tails her while maintaining a safe distance. Upon hearing sirens, he hesitates but continues following her until she stops at the waterfront for a fancy meal. The killer, internally talking himself through the situation, forcibly joins her at the table, aiming his gun, causing the woman to buckle under the pressure. The expert, introducing herself, inquires if the killer gave Hodges a gruesome death, but the killer remains silent. She tries to use friendly tactics, offering food and disclaiming involvement in harming his wife, shifting blame to the brute, whom the killer had already dealt with. Unfazed, the killer maintains his silence, fixated on his next victim as the expert discusses morality and work hypocrisy. Taking her outside, the expert continues talking and attempts reverse psychology, even faking a broken leg. But the killer remains resolute and eventually ends her chatter with a gunshot to the head. His hunt continues, focusing on a high-profile target. Staking out of the man's residence, he heads to the car park but faces a door handle that won't budge. He orders a fob copier from Amazon and observes his target sitting in a car at night. Linking up with a weapons seller, the killer acquires an arsenal. Upon receiving the Amazon delivery, he heads to the gym where the target trains. There, he swipes a janitor's card, goes to the changing rooms, and discovers the target heading to work out. Taking advantage, he used the janitor's card to open the target's locker. He takes a card from the target wallet, copies that card using a fob copier he bought earlier, and promptly returns it to the target locker. 
With that, he patiently waits for the building car park gate to open and utilizes the copied card to gain entry, smoothly navigating through the nearby elevator. The killer heads up to floor 27 and walks right into the billionaire's abode. The man chooses between bottles, but grows scared upon seeing the killer. Claiborne has no idea who the killer is and offers money. However, when the gun is pointed at him, he almost begs until the killer asks if there is a problem between them. Claiborne is thoroughly confused, but quickly grasps the situation upon seeing the card that the killer shows him. He explains that after missing the shot, Hodges recommended taking out insurance and removing the killer. Claiborne, using his billionaire's golden tongue, genuinely tells the killer that he has no issue or problem with him. The killer warns him that if he has to return, he will inflict a slow and painful death. Subsequently, the killer simply walks out of the room and onto the street, heading toward his final destination. He travels to the Dominican Republic, where he enjoys a nice cup of tea with his now-healed wife. And that's the end.